what's older than we think. The first carbonated drink to be sold to the public was invented by a Swiss watchmaker, an amateur scientist J.J. Schwepp, in 1783, who sold his deliciously sparkling water to thirsty customers in Geneva. In just seven years, he was doing business so fast that he moved the factory to London and introduced a new flavor, sparkling lemon, to stand out from competitors who were trying to imitate his drink. Another related fun fact, seltzer and spa are where the bubbly waters come from. Prior to industrialization, the only way to get bubbly water was to get it from carbonated springs. Two of the biggest were in Neander Seltzer and Spa, among others. The aux connector that we still use for headphones and speakers were invented in 1877. There have been improvements since, but the basics of it are pretty much the same. Beer is thought to be older than bread. It's much easier to fill a jar with wheat and water, let it ferment, and brew beer than it is to grind grain, mix it, and bake it. I remember reading or hearing somewhere that in ancient or medieval times, beer had a very low alcohol content and was very thick. It was essentially a dietary staple, quite similar to the way bread is now. The electric car. What is likely the first human carrying electric vehicle with its own power source was tested along the Paris streets in April 1881 by French inventor Gustave Trouvet. The first crude electric car was built in the 1830s, but it was essentially a semi-functioning model. The electric car was a direct competitor to gasoline-powered vehicles until 1920s. When roads got better, people started driving further than the range of an electric car, and the world started finding major oil reserves. Weren't the first electric cars using lead-acid batteries? If so, when the batteries eventually discharge, do people go somewhere to replace their batteries with new ones? There was even a Mr. Rogers Neighborhood episode that featured an electric car, about the size of a golf cart, and they stated that electric cars would be the future. 40 years later, and they are still not quite affordable for most of us. Although they are far more common now, and will probably become more so. Fax machines. They were invented in 1843, before the telephone. Came for this one. To put this in perspective, tumbleweeds aren't native to the American Southwest, but by a quirk of history, we know exactly which shipment of flax from Ukraine brought their seeds to the US in 1877. Commercial fax service has been around longer than tumbleweeds in the American Southwest. The ancient Romans, well, the wealthy ones, had central heating in their homes. You can actually still see the pipes in some of the buildings at Herculaneum. What I think is really cool about Herculaneum is that we're able to recover writings from the libraries there. The pyroclastic flow didn't turn the papyrus to ash. It preserved in a very damaged state, but thanks to lasers, we could see the words that were once visible on the pages. Touchscreens. We think they're one of the defining features of modern technology since they only really got big in the late 2000s, early 2010s. But they were actually invented 55 years ago in 1965. It's kind of crazy to think about, but while most of our grandparents were getting rid of their black and white TVs, researchers already had touchscreen devices in the labs. It wasn't until the 80s that it really got good. But by 90s, it was easily sophisticated technology. In fact, Microsoft even had a Windows XP tablet out by 2001 that had seriously good finger slash stylus recognition. But it didn't really pick up until smartphones became a thing a decade later. You could also consider the magnetic drawing board to be a touchscreen, since it more or less has a stylus and surface for you to draw on. But that was actually invented later than the touchscreen in 1974. Brain surgery. In 1997, archeologists discovered an ancient tomb in the French village of Ancisheim from 5000 BC which contained the decomposing body of a 50-year-old man with holes in his skull. After a thorough examination, it was determined that the holes located near the frontal lobe was caused by a type of surgery, not forced trauma, and the operation appears to have been successful because the wounds healed before the patient's death. To this day, however, researchers cannot say for sure exactly what the surgery was trying to fix. This might have been trepanation, the deliberate practice of drilling a hole into the skull for medical reasons, like headaches, epilepsy, head trauma, 
mental disorders, letting out the evil spirits, etc. The oldest evidence of trepanning comes from the Neolithic period 12,000 years ago. The sentiment that modern society is degenerate and that the youth are to blame is, if I recall correctly, one of the oldest things we have written down that I can remember off the top of my head. Cato the Elder complained that the younger generations were becoming too Greek, and Socrates used to complain that the younger generations were ruining their brains by writing instead of memorizing information. There are far more older examples, but those are the oldest I remember. Maybe Socrates was onto something. One of the reasons I like ancient poetry is the fact that most of the people problems are basically still the same. We think our problems are new and unique to us, but two, three, four thousand years ago, people wrote about stupid friends, coward co-workers, cheating assholes, and of course stupid stubborn old people and reckless disrespectful young idiots. The name Tiffany. It dates back to the 12th century and has actually led to a thing in writing called the Tiffany problem. Because you can have a well-researched historical novel that people just don't buy into because you named your 12th century peasant Tiffany. It sounds laughably anachronistic. The Tiffany problem makes me think of Shakespeare, the merchant of Venice, and the name Jessica. He wanted the love interest, who was Jewish, to have a super exotic name, so he invented the name Jessica. The name has become so common since then that it's totally lost its effect. Similarly, the name Chad. There was at least one saint named Chad, but despite knowing this, I always used to giggle passing St. Chad's Angelican Church in Toronto. Astronomer here. The star HD 14283, also nicknamed Methicella star, is about 200 light years away from us and looks nondescript. However, if we take its composition and compare it to our standard model of stellar evolution for other, better studied stars, the star's age pops out as 14.46 plus 0.8 billion years old. Let me remind you, the universe is thought to be about 13.8 billion years old, and we don't think we got the first stars until maybe 200 million years after that. Obviously, we do not think the Methicella star is literally older than the universe, when it is more likely that we just don't understand stellar evolution for stars, like it super well. However, it is exciting because it is undoubtedly a very old star, and we currently do not have any observation of what the first stars were like in the universe. Called it Population 3 stars. It's thought they were larger than stars are today because there were no metals from stellar fusion to contaminate the hydrogen gas, and they'd thus only live a few million years tops. As such, it's very interesting to have a very old star relatively next door to us in the Milky Way. It will be really interesting in coming years if other very early stars are finally observed to figure out how old they are, and how they compare to this one. Light it may only take 8 minutes for light to travel to Earth from surface of the sun, but the light bounces around inside the sun for over 10,000 years before it reaches the surface. I don't know if this counts, but dinosaurs lived on the Earth a lot longer than most people think. When you think of dinosaurs, you think of their extinction, but they roamed the Earth for 165 million years. Compared to that are 6 million, and it's almost mind-boggling at least in my opinion. What's even crazier to me is that for most people in their minds, there was dinosaurs, extinction, cavemen, us, like we popped out of the ash and of the dinos, but in reality, there were about 58 million years between the dinosaurs dying and the first homo sapiens appearing, where the world was mostly covered in extinct megafauna. Sure, dinosaurs are cool and all, but why does no one talk about the giant North American ground sloths, cave bears, and lions? There's literally tens of millions of years of interesting non-dinosaur species that some people just seem to not even know existed. Social media. Wealthy ancient Romans had a system where they used slaves as scribes and messengers in order to share gossip and art slash poetry and news updates with friends in their social circle. 
If that doesn't count as social media, then in the late 1800s, all train telephone operators for trains were connected to each other by telephone. And if there were no trains coming, they could talk to each other as much as they wanted. Some people even fell in love with the operator on the other side of the phone and arranged an actual wedding across the other side of the country. Some, of course, had virtual weddings, but I'm not even sure how that would work in that time. A lot of modern tech is much older than we think. Stonehenge It predates the oldest pyramid in Egypt by nearly 300 years. Google, Reddit, YouTube, it's hard to imagine that they already have been around for 15 years, with Google actually being around 20 years old. An entire generation has now grown up that cannot remember that it wasn't always there. As someone that was in high school, when the internet hit the mainstream, it boggles my mind that pretty much anyone younger than me has no concept of life without the answer to any question imaginable being at your fingertips, hindered only by your patience to sift through the results. Contact lenses. Leonardo da Vinci had no idea of contact lenses in 1508, and the first successful contact lenses were made in 1888. Ancient Egyptians who built the pyramids. The ancient Egyptians were as old as the ancient Romans, as the ancient Romans are to us. They're actually about 1.5 to 2 times older to the Romans than the Romans are to us, especially if you include Luxor and the Valley of the Kings, Egypt is unbelievably old. Humans with our intelligence and empathy and rationality. People in the past lacked education and our culminative knowledge, but even cavemen thousands of years ago didn't differ too much from us. Cave of Forgotten Dreams, a documentary about cave paintings from 30,000 years ago, really drove this home for me. The art there is so expertly rendered it really shows a thinking and curious mind. Yes, we found countless skeletons slash fossils with parts that looked injured but have been fixed, and it seems the specimen died a while after these injuries, and they seem to have slightly healed. Law Roman law was so advanced and there are still large chunks of statues in civil law countries taken pretty much directly from Roman Codice written from 1500 to 2000 years ago. Important martyr time laws are adaptions of medieval provisions. Lots of business law statues borrow heavily from Napoleonic laws. In common law countries, you find stuff like the statue of Marlboro from the 1200s still in effect, along with still relevant case laws from the 1700s. European law student here. I am literally studying Roman law right now for an upcoming exam, and it is an incredibly elaborated and thoughtful system, not to mention incredibly relevant. They are practically the reason why we have the system we have today. Why jurisprudence is one of the main pillars of the Western judicial system. In my experience, a lot of people I know personally don't realize that music cassettes were invented in the 60s. Cassettes didn't really take off in the states until the late 70s, but the first albums released on cassettes hit the shelves in 1966. A large portion of autism spectrum disorders. About 40% of them have been in human genetics since around 14,000 BCE. Goddamn genetic bottleneck, causing super volcano eruptions. It's theorized that modern times are much harder on autistic people. It's louder and more stressful. An autistic person who may struggle now with fluorescent lighting, loud office spaces, and chaotic schedules may have flourished being a shepherd or a baker hundreds of years ago. The Stanley Cup. It predates the NHL. And if you look at the history of the teams that have won it, there is a year where it wasn't awarded due to the Spanish flu pandemic. The top of it is the original trophy, but the rings on the bottom are replaced every couple of years when they fill up with names. The world in general. The theory that if all of the Earth's history were laid out on a calendar, our current century would only make up the last 10 seconds or so of December 31st. Always blows my mind to consider it that way. It's smaller than that. The last six minutes modern humans evolved, 
the Roman Republic was about to last 7 seconds. The Columbus arrived in America 1 second to midnight. The arrival of people in North America Many scientists believe a sea route was used to navigate the continent much earlier than the Bering Land Bridge. This is hard to prove, however, because any archaeological site that could be found along shorelines are now well underwater. Beringia It was a landmass between what is now Alaska and Siberia. It was fairly large and was populated for thousands of years. It's interesting to me that people lived there long enough that there would have been legends and myths connected to them. A lot of fads have this sense of modernity to them. That if you have an Instagram influencer pushing a product and everyone leaps onto it in order to be hip and cool, but it's nothing compared to the way people follow trends in the past. I've written about the case of French people having rectal surgery because it was fashionable before, but there are dozens of examples. Even something as basic as the fork only became popular because Catherine de Medici made it trendy in the courts of France. Before then, it was considered positively barbaric because it allowed you to eat too quickly and without grace. And then there are the fashion trends that were literally lethal, like lead oxides to whiten skin for purely aesthetic reasons. After all, pale skin meant you weren't tanned, which was hard to pull off unless you were rich enough that you didn't have to work outside. You don't see a lot of pale farmers. And then you'd get what we'd call viral challenges today. You think planking was dumb? Well, you would have loved phone booth stuffing, which was huge in the 50s and involves trying to cram as many people as possible into a phone booth. Why? Just because. The more things change, the more they stay the same. Oxford University is the oldest speaking university in the world. Teaching began in Oxford University in 1096 and developed rapidly from 1167 when Henry II banned English students from attending the University of Paris. The founding of De Nostitlan in 1325 marked the start of Aztec civilization, which makes Oxford University more than 200 years older. Oxford is also 300 years older than Machu Picchu and 150 years older than the Easter Island heads. The Theory of Quantum Mechanics Some of the earliest discoveries in the field date back to the early 19th century, starting with Faraday's discovery of cathode rays in 1838, Gustav Kirchhoff's work on blackbody radiation in 1850, and Boltzmann's theory of discrete energy states in 1877. The name itself was coined by Max Born, Werner Heisenberg, and Wolfgang Pauli in the early 1920s. For comparison, the theory of plate tectonics was first put forward in 1912 and wasn't widely accepted until 1965. 3.5mm headphone jack Made in the 1950s for transistor radios, it originally developed from the 1.4 plug which was first used in a telephone switchboard in Boston around 1878. The song Black Betty by Ram Jam used to be a marching song in the Revolutionary War, and Black Bettys were muskets of course. The lyrics did change a bit, but it's still pretty cool that they're rocking out to songs created by people hundreds of years ago. Ferns The fern class of non-flowering vascular plants that possesses true roots, stems, and complex leaves and that reproduced by spore constitute an ancient division of vascular plants, some of them as old as the Carboniferous period, beginning about 358.9 million years ago, and perhaps older. Their type of life cycle, dependent upon spores for dispersal, long preceded the seed plant life cycle. For comparison, that puts them about 113 million years older than non-bird dinosaurs, which lived between 245 and 66 million years ago. Santa Fe, oldest capital city in America, being declared the capital of New Mexico territory by Spanish crown in 1610, making it 410 years old, far older than the US itself. A bit different answer, but ancient people. A lot of times you hear people talk about the life expectancy of ancient people being around 35, so you picture a really young society, 
When you think of the Romans, Egyptians, Mesopotamians, or even hunter-gatherers, that isn't really the case. The average is 35 because infant mortality and early childhood death was so common. If you just take the life expectancy of people who reach adulthood, 16, then the life expectancy is easily in the early 60s. But there were plenty of 70 or even 80 year olds 2000 years ago. A lot of what we think as modern human advancements predate Homo sapiens, or someone else did it, first including stone tools, simple one predates the genius Homo 33 million years ago, either Australopithecus or Kenyanthropus. It was all pretty impressive by the time Homo sapiens even showed up. Harnessing fire, Homo erectus 1 million years ago, burying the dead, Neanderthals 100,000 years ago, medication, they found a Neanderthal specimen that was chewing on penicillin and aspirin, poplar bark, which would have helped with his tooth infection 40,000 years ago. Retractable roofs on stadiums. The Colosseum had a version of this called a velarium, which was a large awning that could be used to cover the seating areas and was controlled through a series of pulleys. The Colosseum also had rudimentary elevators used mostly to transport wild animals and scenery pieces from the storage areas to the arena floor. The idea that everything's getting worse and that the world's coming to an end soon. Sure, there's new vocabulary and new science involved, but people have been sounding that pessimistic alarm throughout history. Edit. No, I'm not trying to deny climate change. This has also been a fact of life for a while. 